Welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. This is your host, Carter. Let's get right into this. Now, this is going to be a real quick video on a recap of a stream that we handled on the GeForce RTX 2080 WindForce OC Edition from Gigabyte. Now, while we'll throw up some charts on some basic synthetic performance through 3D Mark, most of this video is going to be around the performance on cryptocurrency. Now we picked up a pair of these, but have not got the NV link just yet. We will be doing a recap video of this with the NV link, which will allow us to be able to use both of these in the same machine for synthetic test and gaming performance. But no NV link is required when you're working with cryptocurrency as the mining software independently will run the execution on each card individually. Now the testing machine is a 1950X AMD Threadripper in a Zenith Extreme motherboard. 64 gigs of Triton Z memory, a pair of 512 gigabyte NVMe 960 Pro drives in RAID 0 and a 1300 watt G2 EVGA Supernova gold power supply. Now, as we pull up this first chart, we'll see some performance across the spectrum of different algorithms in the cryptocurrency space right now. The Gigabyte cards were in their standard out of the box OC mode, and we were sure to include the miner that we used in this configuration. So you can see out of the box performance, 35.8 mega hash on Ethereum, at about 174 watts per card. Ravencoin with enemies 1.19 miner put out about 25 mega hash per card using about 220 watts each. XMR performance reined in at about 778, but was only using about 80 watts on the card. So I think there's a lot of room there and that's gonna take a little more work to see if we can take advantage of this new architecture. We obviously included its closest competitors being the 1080 Ti and the 1080 and the 1070 performance numbers here, just to give you guys a comparison, and especially if you don't follow the cryptocurrency scene. Now throughout this test, we did see it temperature throttling at around 83 to 85 Celsius, and the fan curves would go up to 100%. So after seeing these numbers, we decided to go ahead and let's look at some overclocks. This is where the card really starts to shine. The memory clock got pushed all the way up to 1000, which is as far as Afterburner would let it go, and a slight bump to the core of 50 megahertz. Now we can see feeding it direct power the st same 100%. We got 41.3 mega hash out of ETH. That was a total combine of 82 mega hash for both of these cards in the machine, pushing the machine up to 550 watts of power usage. Now the base core machine was using about 135. So we can see that that's about 200 watts a card. So staying on ETH, we wanted to see, could we drop the power usage? Cause this is pretty critical when you're mining is what your operating expense cost is. Not just your ROI back on your capital expense on the card, but can you get a decent hash rate for less power. This is one of the promises of the new architecture and anytime new architecture comes out on any GPUs. We see a holding of 41.3 mega hash and a total of 82 mega hash when at 70% power and we drop almost 100 watts off the system down to 535 watts. We take it a little further and bury the needle as the lowest power setting we can set to 50% power and see that we get a little instability. Still hold that 41 mega hash for both cards for a total of 82 but we see the second card start to drop off here. We did drop the power wattage down to 375 watts for the whole machine. That's an impressive 120 watts for per card and still almost getting 41. Seeing that there was some inconsistency there, we bumped that up by 8% to 58%, ultimately landing where our final result for Ethereum looks like it's the best for this card. 1000 watt overclock on the memory, 50 watts to the core, and 58% power limit. Yielded 67 Celsius and still maintained 41.5 mega hash. Now we try to do this this with Ravencoin, which uses a little more intensity when it comes to the core. In Ravencoin, with an extensive set of overclocks, sometimes becomes unstable. So we dropped the memory down to 850, and we went up a little on the core to 70%, and tried it with the 58% power settings, the 70%, and then 108%. We, we maxed out the power that we could feed to the card just to see if there was any difference. And here we can see, versus the 100% power and no clocks, the real differences. And what it comes down to is Ravencoin really genuinely isn't worth right now messing around with a lot of the clocks short of maybe that 70 to 80 percent power limit to where you won't get as much mega hash but you get a better mega hash per wattage performance with holding 42 mega hash for both cards at around 21 mega hash per card at 70 percent power limit which puts it full system at 430 watts or in this case about 150 watts per card we did see max tdp when running 108 percent on raven 
pushing the machine up to 607 total wattage, which essentially was 250 watts per card, max TDP. Now this was a pretty fun live stream. I do enjoy when you guys come in there and ask a lot of questions. We did try a whole bunch of new algorithms that we normally didn't try, and I can't wait to get to the 2080 Ti's when those show up. So if you guys like this content and you want more of it, please like, subscribe, and share. We will be doing a live stream on the 2080 Ti's as they show up, and we will be doing a small build of four to six of these cards to look at what our total performance for a like-for-like -like rig would be. So if that interests you, definitely check us out both here on YouTube and on Twitch. Thanks again and catch you guys later.